morning, Christ Chapel. Stand to your feet. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. And I was breathing, but not. Alive. All my failures I try to hide. It was my tomb till I met you. You called my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glorious day, you called my name. sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my Who died 
and rose from the grave. Light of the world is calling my name. I'm coming up from the deepest of waters, free from the sin that held me so long. Done with the shame, it's been left at the bottom. Freedom is free. calls me friend every bond is now broken and free his resurrection is rising in me I'm coming up from the deepest of waters free from the sin that held me so long done with the shame it's been lived at the fire to wander, no longer be lost, saved and set free, oh we are redeemed, the devil no longer has a hold of me, well he made a way, he suffered the cross, no longer to wander, no longer be lost, and saved and set free, oh we are redeemed. The devil no longer has a hold of me. When his head was bowed on the cross, it was done. Forever it's finished. The war it was won. We sing a new song and give praise to the King. Who rose in the race for eternity.
to the questions, the fears, and the lies. Somebody here is desperate for freedom from the past, the change. says wait you just hold on cause this thing ain't over yet before we sing this uh, this next song uh, I just wanted to take a moment and uh, talk to you talk to the church whether you're here physically or here online or home watching most of you know this week's been a it's been a tough week for our church. It's been a tough week for our community. It's been tough in the fact that over the past seven day and a seven day span, we've we've seen three parents have to bury their children. And when something like that happens, you just you don't have any words. There, there's there's just there's just no words. And so when I was thinking about what to say, I. I do know this, that any time that tragedy comes, any time that heartache comes, any time that hard times come, there's, there's always two questions that we ask. Number one is why. Number two is where. Number one is why. Why did this happen? Why, why to me? Why to my family? And I just want to tell you this morning, I don't know. Well, you may never know. And be very leery of that person or those people that will come to you and say, well, let me tell you why. No, they don't know. 
There's some things we'll never know on this side. But I can help you out on the second question. Where? Where, where was God? Where was Jesus during this time? The answer is simple. He's right here. It reminds me of a story of an elderly couple. They were driving in an old, old truck. They've been married for many, many years. And they was driving their old style truck. And it had the, the, uh, the bench seat in the front. And they pull up to this red light. And right beside them come a younger couple. And it pulls up right beside them. And, and the, the wife looks over at the younger couple. And she sees that the young lady is sitting almost in the driver's lap. Just sitting up so close to her, right beside him. And she looks at her husband. She says, you know, honey. I remember when you and I used to drive that close together. And he just casually looks at her and he says, well, I've not moved. I'm still here. And sometimes if we're not careful, we'll ask, like, Lord, I remember when you and I used to be that close. And the Lord's going to say, I've not moved. I'm still here. Even when it doesn't seem like it, even when it doesn't feel like it, even when it doesn't look like it, he's still here. See, we saw the Lord working through our community. We saw the Lord working through cards, through posts. Social media was lit up with encouragement for these families. We saw the Lord work in many, many ways. Deuteronomy says, do not be afraid, for he will go with you and he will never leave you. Hebrews 11, 4 says, For the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. I said I was going to do this without crying, but I'm a crier. I cry at grocery store grand openings. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let the Lord be your encouragement. Just know this today that He's here. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever. And so as we pray this morning, I, I want you to do this. If, if, you're, if, you're, if your family is next to you, I know we're careful with the corona thing. I get that. But if your family is next to you or a loved one that you came with is next to you, I just I want you to do this. I want you to, to wrap your arm around them as we pray. And let us be Jesus in someone today. Let us be that encouragement that that person needs today. Let us, let them feel Jesus in you. Let them see Jesus in you. When the three Hebrew children were thrown into the fire, the Bible never says that they saw the fourth man. The king saw the fourth man. That's who the Lord was trying to get the attention of, was the king. So through this fire and through this challenge today, you may not see the Lord in there with you, but someone on the outside will. Lord, we love you. God, we don't understand. We don't have the question to answer of why. But Lord, I know this, that when we can't see your hand, we can trust your heart. Lord, I ask you today to Heal our church. Heal our community. Most of all, God, heal these families. Can't imagine. But Lord, you can love on them as only that you can. God, I pray for those that are going through tragedy. I, I pray, God, help us realize, Lord, that heaven is not a punishment, Lord. It's a reward. I know it hurts us here. But God, that's our ultimate goal is you. And so, Lord, may we rest upon that. May we gain strength in that this morning. May we lean on you, and may we hold on to you like we've never held before. Give us strength. Give us peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope and no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When 
death was arrested and my life began. Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains. In my orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance. When death was arrested, and my life began. Oh, your grace, so free, washes over. From my chains, I'm a prisoner. No. it this morning for you don't know for you guys that don't know this is Thomas Bale who liked that second song the name of that song is overcomes and it was written by mr. Thomas Bale so 
I don't know if this is right, but if you want to download it, maybe go to Christ Chapel Zebulon Facebook page, today's service. No, no, just kidding. But anyway, um, my name is Michael Smith. I got a few announcements real quick we want to go through. So do we have any guests? I know we do because I've talked to many of you this morning. Let's give it up for our guests, Christ Chapel. So if you're a guest with us today, we ask you to do one thing, and it's to fill out this red card that's in the seat in front of you. If you'll fill it out, put your information on it, turn it in at one of the kiosks in the foyer, we would love to give you a, a gift and also to maybe reach out to you and connect with you guys. So thank you for being a guest with us if you're here in person or even if you're online. Thank you. Um, life groups. Our life groups just started last week. So if you, yeah, yeah, yeah. 27, 27 life groups. So if you didn't get to come last week, you still have time to get in and, and jump right in there. The one we have the screen up here for is for our young adults. Uh, is led by Mr. Carson Whiteside, who is in the drum cage over here. His is on Tuesday nights at 6.30. There's also another great one that's on Tuesday nights at 6.30. It's a couples class. And I might just know the teachers, my wife and I. So we love you. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Just kidding. So find you a life group, get connected. You need that community around here, and, and there's plenty, plenty of places to get plugged in. On September 13th, we have our Holy Roar. <laughs> Holy Roar is usually a, a night event that we have where you just come in and we just have worship, just like we've had this morning, and you can just, I'm a worshiper. I love to worship, and we can fill these altars and, and worship, but this is going to be on Sunday morning, the 13th, all three services. It'll be nothing but worship and, and communion, as Pastor Billy mentioned in first service. So it's going to be a great day. Put that on your calendar. Make sure you're here, and just we're just believing great things for that Sunday morning. Um, you guys give like it's unbelievable. I mean, we're going through a pandemic, and you guys are breaking records every month with your giving, and we are forever grateful. We thank you. We couldn't, we couldn't do what we do. That's right. We couldn't have this building, this facility, this equipment. Everything is because of your, your, your giving and your faithfulness to God. So we want to thank you for that. At this time, we're going to raise the lights. We're going to, um, we're going to flip the script. We've had a tough week, like Ricky said, but we're fixing to celebrate some great things that happened in a lot of you families' lives this past couple of weeks with the baptism. So it's going to be great. If you will, cross the aisles, greet someone, pay attention to their wristband. Green means go. Yellow, slow, red means no, just respect them. So make everybody welcome. Wandering in sin, I went searching for redemption. Down a road that had no end. I was walking through the fire. I was living on the run with my flesh lost in desire. I was drowned. If I believed when you looked at me, there was no judgment. There was no judgment. Wish I was convinced your love is on a mission, and I am the target. And I am the target. Can you reframe all the pictures of the person that I thought I had to be? You're not looking for a resume, you're looking for a way to be with me. Good morning, 9.30. How you feeling? Everybody all right? Yeah. So if you had a baby dedicated last Sunday, if you've been a part of baptism, there are pictures in the lobby. We want you to stop by and pick those up. Those are a gift to you from us to, to kind of commemorate your day. Uh, this morning, we're doing virtual video pre-recorded uh, baptism. 
We thought it might not be the best idea to put 74 people in the same tub of water uh, during COVID. It's not a good idea to do that outside of COVID. Can somebody say amen? Like you ever been on vacation and they had a hot tub and you opened it up and went, nah, I don't think I'm going to get in there. Anybody but me? Like, nah, that ain't right. That ain't for me. So if you have a, uh, if you have a cowbell this morning, we're going to practice on three, on three. Bunch of middle schoolers. You just couldn't wait, could you? Yeah, I'll borrow one. Thank you, sweetheart. Is that for me? All that R? All of this? You like that? So, let's go all three. Come on, somebody. So, recently people will call and say, how do you get that many people to decide to be baptized? How do you have 30 plus babies get dedicated? And what they're looking for is a formula. I got three steps. Step number one, Jesus. Step number two, Jesus. You got the rhythm now? Step number three, Jesus. Jesus. This church is working because we're trying our best to make his name famous. Make us smaller, God, and make you bigger. That's the whole concept here. So as we go through baptisms this morning, they're going to be in three different sets, three different videos. If you're here with somebody that you're watching get baptized and their name comes on the screen and we dunk them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you, of course, can rattle your bell. You ever been to a graduation where they say, hold all of your applause to the end? That's baloney. I mean, you've been working with that kid 18 years. The least they can let you do is stand up and say, way to go, boy, right? Way to go, girl. So uh, today we will celebrate at the end of the videos, you know, with a big hoorah, but it's okay to get loud when your person is getting baptized. So we've done some of these at the river, the Flint River, done some of them in a swimming pool. We've done some out front in front of the building and and, and it's very intentional baptism. Every one of these people had to set up a time to have this done. Uh, Very different than just showing up on a Sunday saying, hey, I want to get baptized. Something very intentional. They had to set it in their schedule and make it part of their calendar. And uh, I don't know that we can do baptism during Corona, Pastor. COVID who? 74 people decided we'll find a way to get baptized. And instead of the church as an organization, or ours included, the Big C Church, complaining about this season let's just get creative and let's find a way to continue to reach people for jesus this is our season this is our time (laughs) are you ready for some baptism come on somebody all right cue up sound guys let's watch some baptism and let's make some noise baptize you man in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit
great question Jesus was put in a position where he was tempted multiple times before he started his earthly ministry you remember Satan said if you were really God's boy you could just fly off this cliff and he would always respond to his temptation with the Word of God he said you could turn these stones into bread and he said no 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 man doesn't live by bread alone always took him back to the word but after the temptation he walks out of the wilderness and he sees John the Baptist at the Jordan River baptizing folks. And Jesus said, baptize me. John grabbed Jesus and he dunked him in the water, submerged him, immersed him, pulled him out, and a dove ascended to heaven and the heavens opened up. And God said, that's my son in whom I am well pleased. You know what happened at the Flint River? You know what happened in the swimming pool? Do you know what happened in front of this church? Every time somebody went into the water, the heavens opened up and God said, that's my son and that's my daughter in whom I'm well pleased. It's kind of like the bookends of Jesus' ministry. He starts his ministry in the waters of baptism. We know about his life. He healed people, raised some folks from the dead, changed the water into wine at a wedding. Took people who couldn't hear, hear and, and opened up their, their hearing and their ears. He made the mute to speak. Instead of celebrating him, they decided to kill him. Trumped up charges of blasphemy. So they hang him on a cross and they beat him to death. Murder of our Savior. He borrows the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea for three days because he just needs to borrow one. He don't need one permanently. And he stays there for three days while the church is overwhelmed. While the world goes quiet. But on the third day, something began to rattle. Something began to shake. The God of the universe was proving now and forever that death can't hold me and death can't stop me. I own the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He came out of the tomb. I believe he kind of kicked the end out of it. Kind of a, a Bruce, Lee, Bruce Lee Kung Fu kind of move. Just kicked it out. And he ascended back to heaven. But just before he did that, he was meeting with a group of his followers. And he said, now, 
go make disciples, baptizing them. Do you know this? In the name of the, and the, and the. He started his earthly ministry in the waters of baptism in the Jordan with John. And the other book end of his ministry, he said, hey, I'm going away, but go make some disciples and make sure you baptize them. We love baptism in this church because it mattered to Jesus. And what matters to him should matter to us. What breaks the heart of God should break our hearts. The things that force our God to weep, you say, he doesn't cry? Really? Lazarus walked up to the tomb of a friend, or Jesus walked up to the tomb of Lazarus, a friend who had died. And the shortest verse in the Bible is written, what is it? Help me out. Jesus, well, we mourn with those who mourn, and we rejoice with those who rejoice. Let's get the heart of the Father. So, the book ends of baptism at the Jordan and at the Ascension. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. have one more set of videos to show you of the, the final third of people who got baptized. I want to spend just a couple minutes before I do that answering some questions about baptism. Every time we do baptism, people who are not church, who are getting their lives together, 
they had these questions and I feel like if we're not careful we'll just run by those without them understanding so I want to answer just six quick questions don't take me a second the first is this Billy what is baptism what, what is that it is you having an opportunity to share with the world what you've decided to do privately accepting Jesus is something man that's really inward it's something that you go man I'm making a decision my heart is changing but coming out of the waters of baptism is our chance to celebrate that it's almost like on a Sunday you can get saved in your chair but often I'll ask you to come to the front because the church still needs to see that people are getting saved and the church still needs to witness that people are getting baptized it's just a public display of a private decision Why should I get baptized? Number two, well, in the book of Matthew and the book of Mark, Jesus asked us to follow him through baptism. You say, Billy, well, do I have to get baptized? Can I get to heaven if I don't get baptized? I think you can. The thief on the side of Jesus, he repented to Christ, and Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He never had a chance to get baptized. But the bigger question is this, why do you want to make a C when it comes to your faith? Why do you want to just do the minimum effort to just slide into heaven? If there's any way or anywhere in my life that I want to step up and I want to shine, it's in the way that I live my life, in the way that I honor Jesus. The question isn't, should I get baptized? The question is, when can I get baptized? When is my day? When can I sign up? It's not a matter if we have to, it's a matter of obedience. And we find, as a church, that when we are obedient to the commands of Jesus, that our lives are blessed. But the moment that I walk away and I begin to disobey God, consequences and discipline enter my life. Just let me ask you something. If you've been born again, why would you not want to get baptized? Why would you not want to follow the acts of Christ? Number three, when's the best time to get baptized? When you get saved. I wish we could keep a baptism pool open every Sunday. So when somebody walks out and gets saved, we're like, get in the tub. <laughs> Now's your time. My family's not here. Get in the tub. Jesus is here. We want to walk this out. You know, sometimes in life, if we don't do things immediately, we talk ourselves out of it. You ever felt led to help somebody, like maybe be generous to somebody, and you, you thought, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go home and pray about it. What you meant was, I'm going to think about it. And you talked yourself out of it. And maybe there's some of you in the room when it comes to baptism, you thought, well, I got saved. I'm regularly attending church. I'm even writing some checks. I I have a Breeze account at Christ Chapel. Listen to me. I beg you, let us celebrate your decision. Let us get excited about you following Christ. And we get to witness that through your baptism. Number four, do you baptize children? Yeah. Yes and yes. Now, here's the thing. Some of you got baptized as a kid because your mama or your daddy wanted you to do it. I get that. And later on, you said, I want to do it again. That, that's okay. We kind of leave that, that final decision up to parents. You know them better than we do. Cognitively, you, you know how far they think, if they're advanced, if they're a little bit behind, if they're a little bit slower, getting the grasp of Christianity. That's okay. Don't rush it and don't leave them in the conversation. Allow them to get there for you. My Ruby just got baptized. She was the last one on the last slide there that just came up. Maybe a little bit later than some of her other siblings getting baptized. It's okay. It's not a competition. It's not like we're fighting to get somewhere first. We want kids to know and understand what it means to go into the waters of baptism. Number five, Billy, what's the difference between immersing, sprinkling, and other ways of baptizing? Because most of us come from different backgrounds. People often ask me, Billy, what kind of church is Christ Chapel? It's a mutt. Last time I checked, mutts make the best dogs. See, you know went and bought that dog with all them papers on him? Lives 18 months and dies. It was a thoroughbred. Let me tell you something. You pick up a dog on the side of the road, he'll love you till the Lord comes back. He just won't leave you. Now, now, when I say that, often people think I'm being like, I'm like dissing our church. Like, I'm not. What does heaven look like? Heaven looks like Baptists and Methodists and Pentecostals. It looks like Presbyterians 
And all of those denominations saying, we lay down the banner of our denomination and we lift up the banner of Jesus. Jesus is above all those things. And for many of us in the room, we were taught more to love our denomination than to love our Jesus. Back it up, Jack. Listen to me. Jesus is the answer and the only answer. It's not a group of churches that come together and call themselves a group or denomination. I'm not against that if it's healthy for you. But this is what I know. Everybody who walks in that door is welcome to come and experience Jesus in this house no matter where you came from. It doesn't matter to us. And even bigger than that, you're welcome to come through the door. I don't care where you were at last night. I've had people on Sunday say, Preacher, I got saved today, and I could tell that last night they were in the Mad Dog 2020. Do you hear me? You say, Billy, you would share that? Yes, because God still cleans up the drunk every time. Every time. So, we immerse in our church, which means you take you all the way down. If we don't get you all the way down, we back you up and put you in twice. You saw that a while ago, right? Let me tell you why I like doing that. I'm not, I'm not, if you did it another way, that's okay. Here's the concept. Buried with Christ. Thomas' song, my sin is at the bottom of that river. It's at the bottom of that pool, at the bottom of that lake. Raised, shameless, and guiltless. Because of the grace and the mercy and the goodness of God. The immersion matters. But it doesn't matter more than getting baptized. Years ago, I was a hospice chaplain. And I was with a guy who wanted to get baptized before he passed away. He knew he had hours or maybe days at the, at the most la- left in his life. So I walked out to my truck. I had had lunch at Arby's. All of God's people love Arby's. I know y'all don't know nothing about Arby's. A little cheddar on the roast beef. Never mind. Whew. Preach, preacher. Shout him down. And all I had in my truck was an Arby's cup. So I went in and said, can I use your bathroom? And his wife said, sure. And I rinsed it out. I filled it up with warm water. And I went out there and I said, brother, I baptize you today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just as baptized, just as baptized, Big Jim, listen to me, with a five-gallon Georgia bucket, (laughs) in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yes! Number six, do I need to get baptized again? You know, sometimes when people have made a decision to follow Christ and they back up on those choices and they begin to live unto themselves rather than submitting to the words of the Father. They come home as a prodigal and they want to like recommit their life to Jesus. I think that's wonderful. And in that moment they're like, hey man, part of the completion for me is to to get baptized again. I never turn anybody down for that. Look, if you get baptized 25 times in your life, it ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you. It's like our kids. If they take 25 baths in their lifetime, come on, somebody. It ain't going to hurt them. So hopefully I've, I've been able to clear up just a few of the questions that maybe you have about baptism. My biggest question is this. Why did we only baptize 74 people? Everybody's like, wow, that's awesome. I'm like, that ain't a big number. We've done 70 and 80 and almost 90 a couple times in this church. Next time we do baptism, we're going to baptize 100 plus people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hey, check this out. I got to hurry, but check this out. People say numbers don't matter. Really? So you just want, and if you don't go to heaven, it don't matter. They matter. You know who numbers don't matter to? The team is losing. I don't want to keep the score. You ever played ball with that boy before? I don't want to keep the score no more. It's because I'm beating your butt at this game. You don't want to keep the score. Let me tell you something. We speak to the enemy today. We are not losing in this season, but we are winning in this season. You say, hey, Billy, that sounds arrogant. It ain't because of me. It's greater. It's he that's in me than he that's of this world. 
Hey, you ain't seen nothing yet. Do you hear me? You ain't seen nothing yet. This is not going to be a regional church. I want you to hear me. This is going to be a global church. There are world changers in this room right now that God is calling you into the ministry. He is opening up incredible doors for you. Let, let, me, just, let me just tell you something. It is never about you. It's always about him. But walk in every opportunity that he gives you. Make his name famous. More Jesus and less of us. Let's celebrate one more time right here. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! We baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Make some noise this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! Yeah. Hey, while other churches are praying for a move of God, we are in the middle of a move of God in this house. Grab your seats today. If you got baptized and you were part of our baptism uh, videos, I want you to make your way to the front this morning. We got a baptism towel to give you since you're so wet. We normally give those out, but we want to make sure you still get it because it's such a good keepsake today. You didn't miss it, girl. FaceTiming. That's awesome. So we're going to have different, different amounts of people in every service just according to which service they attend. So, But come on down and just kind of make your way and... Make a line across the front here. Yeah. 
So they're going to pass out a towel to you. As they're doing that, we're going to sing a final song together. Would you all stand this morning and let's sing, a, a sing together? Hey, and, and here's the thing. This is a great sing-along song. It's actually a great baptism song, too. It's a great sing-along. Why don't you become the choir today? You know, these 50 people up here are pretty good. What about these 700 people who are sitting in these seats today? Come on now. You say, well, I can't sing. He said, make a joyful noise. Come on. Let's sing together this morning. I love you guys. Be blessed. Chapel has been an honor worshiping with you this morning. If you got baptized, you did baby dedications last week, do not forget to pick your pictures up in the back. We hope you all have a great rest of the day. We love you.
this road is getting hard I heard you say it's overwhelming I said I'd never be too far And I meant that from the heart I see the mountains